so I mentioned before, there is a webinar on, non, on non-calculated questions and how you would work them out. So I'm going to use the same principles from that. So if you're a bit unsure how to do paper-based calculations, you may want to look at that after this webinar if you haven't done already, just to remind yourself. Also, I'm going to use the method that I tend to use. If you use a different method, that's absolutely fine. But hopefully the, the one I show you won't be too alien to you. So let's take the question, if you see on the right there, let's say we have the question of 11.601 plus 0.82. So what I'm going to do in terms of writing that, if I can write on the screen, it won't be very straight, I'm afraid. I'll write as best I can. It's always great if you can get some sort of grid paper or line paper like this so you can put your um, numbers into boxes. It makes life a lot easier. So our number is 11 points. I'm going to put the point in there. 601. And if I was doing adding on paper, I'd write a plus there and I would write 0.82. And you'll see my decimal points are lining up, which is why how I'm able to line up the other numbers. We've also got a bit of a, a, an empty line here, and I'm so I'm just going to put a placeholder in of a zero. It obviously, it doesn't say that in the question, but we know that zero. The example I just gave, and, and I just want to make up the numbers. I could potentially put a zero here as well. So we've got numbers in each line. If I was to add these up, uh, I would do one plus zero is one. Zero plus two is two. Eight plus six is fourteen, which I would write with a four there and carry a one down. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus my extra 1 is 2, and 1 plus 0 is 1. And so my answer is 1241. The key thing with addition is wherever I put the decimal point in my question, I need to put it in my answer. So my answer here is actually 12.421. When we're adding decimals, actually, we could potentially take the decimal point out and put it back in afterwards. Um, it makes no difference to our adding up. As long as we line things up properly, as I've done there, it makes absolutely no difference to our adding up. And um, what is key is you line them up and you put the decimal point wherever it is in the question, you also put it into the answer. So that's adding up and we get a very similar story. Just change my pen. If we're doing takeaway. So I'm going to use the same numbers. I'm going to subtract 11.601, take away 0 0.82. So once again, it's important to write them uh, in columns alongside each other with the decimal point where it is. And now if I do uh, take away, I'll do one take away zero is one. I can't do zero take away two. So the method I would use for that would be to borrow one from here. If you're unsure what I've done there, again, the other webinar will go through that with you. I've now got 10 take away two is eight. And again, I can't do five take away eight. So I'm going to borrow one from here. And I'll do 15 take away eight is seven. Zero take away zero is zero. And one take away zero is one. And then once again, I look where my decimal place was in my question and I put my decimal place in the same place at the end. So my answer to that question is 10.781. And so all I've done is, is uh, addition and subtraction, just like I would any other time on paper. There is a decimal point in there, so I've drawn it, but actually I've, I've, for all intents and purposes, I've ignored that there's a decimal point in there. And as long as I put it in the same place in the answer, then that will, um, that will give me the correct answer at the end of it. Hopefully it makes sense. Right, let me rub that out. There we go. And we're going to look at multiplication. So my number here is 611 uh, times 3.4. Slightly different this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that again how I would do a long multiplication such as this. So I would do 611 times 34. What you'll notice I've done this time is I haven't put a decimal point in. I've done that on purpose. I've taken the decimal points out completely. So run 6.11 times 3.4. I've just done 611 times 34. The way I would do that with long multiplication, I would do 1 times 4 is 4. I would do this 1 times 4 is also 4. And then 6 times 4 gives me 24. Um, I would then, I'm then multiplying by the three, which is the tens. So therefore I need to put zero in my answer. I do one times three is three. One times three is three. And six times three is 18. And then I take those two numbers and add them together. And again, if you're a bit unsure, or this is a different method you use. That's absolutely fine. This is just a method I use for adding up on paper. I do four plus zero is four. Four plus three is seven. Seven. 2 plus 8 is 10, came a 1, and then I've got 1 plus 1 is 2. So my answer of 611 times 34 is 20,774. We now need to go back to the question, though, and we need to look at how many decimal points are in the question. 
If we look after six, there's one, two, two number ones. And after three, there's point four. So there's another decimal point there. So there are three decimal points in our question, one, one, and four. So if we go to our answer that we got up here, what I need to do is count three decimal points. There were three decimal points in total in the question. So in my answer, I want to count one, two, three decimal points, which means I put my decimal point there. Colour the hint, a bit of a large decimal point. So my answer to that question is actually 20.774. So what I did was multiply it, ignoring the decimal points, and then to put the decimal point in the end, what I do is count how many decimal points are in the question. Well, there was one, one, and four, so three decimal points. And therefore, in my answer, I make sure there are three decimal points. In this case, 20.774. So a little bit different to the additional subtraction there, because we are taking the additional subtraction. What I said, it said is just leave the decimal point where it is. And, and for all intents and purposes, ignore it and just work through it. For multiplication, what we need to do is take the decimal point out and then decide where we put it back in at the end. So a slightly different method there, but something to keep in mind. And the final thing I want to show you then for is looking at um, division long division or short division, I know you call it. Uh, and there are two different types um, and two different ways of addressing this. You can actually use either of these, but, but well, well, I'll explain what kind of question I'd use them for. So my first question is 64 divided by 0 0.2. So I'm dividing by a decimal point, 0 0.2, 7.2 or whatever, but I'm dividing by a decimal point. What's the easiest thing to do here is let's get rid of that decimal point by finding a way that we can, we can eradicate it. And what I could do is multiply both of those numbers by 10. And if I did that, it would give me 640 divided by 0.2 times 10 is 2. So what I've done there is I've multiplied both numbers by 10. So I've changed my sum from 64 divided by 0.2 to 640 divided by 2. And this is the way I would write it to do long division or short division. And I would do 2s into 6 go 3 times, 2s into 4 go twice. 2 into 0 goes 0. So my answer is 320. Now I don't need to put the decimal point back in here because the ratio is still the same. Because I've multiplied both sides by 10, the ratio of, of 640, well, 2 into 640 is exactly the same ratio as 0.2 into 64. So my answer actually remains 320, and I don't need to do anything about putting the decimal point back in. That is the correct answer. You can check that on a calculator if you wish, or we'll check it afterwards. So the key there is I've, I've multiplied by 10 and I may have had to multiply by 100 or 1000, whatever it might be, to make sure that I'm, I'm not involved in a decimal point at all. Basically, I've eradicated the decimal point and therefore I can do the calculation as I would normally. Final example is when the number that you are dividing is actually a decimal point. So, and it's a little bit easier this one. So we figure is 94.5 divided by 3. So the number of dynamo is a whole number, but actually our original number, 94 point five, has got decimal points in. The good news here is we can do what we did for addition and subtraction and put the decimal point in, but just ignore it, work with it as though it's not there. So three, the way I would work this in, in uh, division is three is into nine, go three times. Three is into four, go once, and there's one to carry over. And three is into 15, go five times. And then all I need to do is look where my decimal point was in the question. And it's put in the same place in the answer. So my answer for 94.5 divided by 3 is actually 31.5. That's nice and easy, that one. Addition and subtraction um, and, and that last example there, nice and easy because you, you put the decimal points on paper, but you just ignore it when you're doing the calculations and do your calculations like you would normally, and then just make sure the points are in the same place in the answer. The, the probably more difficult ones are the multiplication, uh, which if you remember, I took the decimal point out and then put it back in at the end, or this one where the easiest thing to do is to multiply both sides by 10, so we've got the same relationship between them, um, and therefore we can do it a normal division. Now, because there's a number of people on the call, and because it can take a little while for people to, to get used to in practice, I haven't got examples for you to do, or rather, I'm gonna skip the examples I've got for you to do now, but we will send some follow-up examples for you to do on paper. So hopefully you can um, remember these rules, remember what we've gone through there, uh, and complete them in your own time after. We'll give you the top tips, though, something that you can refer back to. So if you're adding or subtracting these decimals, you put in zero so the numbers have the same length. So if you remember, I put everything into columns so they're equal. You then add or subtract as you would normally, just ignoring the decimal point. And then you put the decimal point in exactly the same place in the answer. So for all intents and purposes, you don't need to worry about the decimal point. It just wherever it is in the question, it goes in the same place in the answer. 
if you're multiplying, what you do is you multiply back normal, but you take out the decimal point and you ignore or take out the decimal point. You then, once you've got your answer, count the total number of decimal points that were in the question and put the decimal point in that corresponding place in the answer. So if you remember my question, had about I've got three decimal points in it. It was one, one and four. So therefore my answer, I had to include three decimal points. Two options when you're dividing. If you're dividing by a decimal, what you do is you get rid of the decimal point by multiplying it by whatever you need to, maybe 10, maybe 100. Then, and as long as you do the same to both numbers, you're keeping the ratio so you can just divide as normal. And then finally, if you're dividing a decimal, so your number is a decimal divided by a whole number, again, you do just divide as normal and ignoring the decimal point and then just put the decimal point in the same place in the answer. So quite a lot to go through there. If I was obviously, uh, if we were together or in a room, I could give you lots of chance to practice now, but obviously the whole point of these sessions is to bite size for get the information for you then to take away. So if you can remember those top tips or, or refer back to them and when you're doing the calculations, I'll send you soon um, some examples to work through on your own. Have a go though, see how you get on um, and then I can support you if need be. Uh, and again, if you're looking at the um, long addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, and you're a bit unsure how to do that on paper, there is another webinar um, that goes through that. So if you, if you are unsure, it's probably worth going back to that one first before attempting this one with decimals.